now by Ravon and Rodney Wells, the parents of, of um, Mr. Nichols here and of Tyree Nichols and also Benjamin Crump, the family attorney. I thank you so much for joining us. Thank I really you, appreciate sir. you. I don't know how you're holding up and able to do this under these circumstances, but we're certainly grateful that you're here. Thank you. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing as well as can be expected. It's very difficult right now. I'm still trying to understand all of this and trying to wrap my head around all of this. It's still like a nightmare right now. So, I just, can I just be honest, listen, I, just conducting this interview, I, look, I'm a mama's boy. I was also a skater, so mm -hmm. I was a skater, skateboarder growing up. Um, and so you know, I just can't imagine my mother dealing with this when you walked in you said don i'm not very good at this and i said i got you mm -hmm. what do you mean you're not very who would be good at this exactly who would be good at this i don't know because this is very difficult this is very difficult yeah yes how are you doing dad i'm hanging in there you know i have to be strong for the family so we have other siblings that we have to be strong for also mm -hmm. did you hear the chief Yes. What did you think? I respected what she said. She's doing an excellent job, I feel. Um, she's moving things along, and I just, I like what she's doing. She said that there has been nothing, that no evidence that they have found so far to substantiate why the officers stopped Tyree Nichols. No evidence so far. What did you make of that? God, I think it's telling because there's so much videotape America's about to see over an hour long. Video from a pole camera that catches a lot of the tragedy. All this body cam footage. If Tyree was driving reckless, we should see it. We're not saying that they're lying, but we should see it. And the fact that they can't show it to us further underscores why this was so unnecessary. Mm. So unnecessary. I have to say this. Because, like Ms. Wells said, how swiftly they moved in Memphis and how swiftly the district attorney brought charges against these five black police officers. This is now the blueprint right. for America. When you see officers committing crimes yes. on video, mm -hmm. then you can't tell us that you got to go six months, you got to go a year. No, when it was these black officers, we saw it move swiftly. And so think about all the ones we covered, Don. I mean, the Tamir Rices, mm -hmm. the Michael Browns, uh, Ahmad. All these cases took so long for Lando Castillo, for them to charge. Mm -hmm. But here in Memphis, mm -hmm. we now have the blueprint that it can be it done can. swiftly and efficiently. You're shaking your head in agreement and you're saying yes. Yes. Why? Because um, just the way they move so fast, I don't understand why they couldn't do that in other cases. But just to know that they moved as fast as they did lets us know that it can be done. You wanted first degree murder charges. Yes. You didn't get that. No. The charges that were filed against those officers are good charges. Those are the charges that I feel will stick. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so I'm happy with the charges that the district attorney has set forth. 20 days since this happened. Yes. Without your baby. Yes. Yes, this is hard. No, I don't have my baby. I'll never have my baby again. But I do know that he was a good person and that all this, all the good in Tyree will come out. And so that's what keeps me going because I just feel like my son was sent here on assignment from God, and his assignment is, was over. It's over. And he was sent back home, and God is not going to let any of his children's names go in vain. So when this is all over, 
it's going to be some good and some positive because my son was a good and positive person. Mm -hmm. I... And that's what keeps me going. Have you gotten any sleep? Not really, but it, it's what it is. Mom, when did you first learn about this? How did you hear? The Memphis Police Department banged on our door approximately around between 8.30 and 9 o'clock asking if I knew Tyree Nichols. And we said, yes, what's going on? He's been arrested. Arrested for what? DUI. DUI? My son don't drink like that. What do you mean DUI? Well, we had to pepper spray him and tase him. So he's being attended to by the paramedics and we'll send him to the hospital. And then after that, he'll go to booking. What? They then asked me, was he on any type of drugs or anything of that nature? Because he was, they were saying that it was so difficult to put the handcuffs on him and he had this amount of energy, superhuman super energy. And what they were describing was not my son. So I was very confused. I asked if I can go to the hospital. They told me no. They left. My husband and I, we got in our car and we went to go see if we could find Ty because he wasn't answering his phone or anything. When I asked them where my son was, they said nearby. Nearby? What is nearby? I got nothing from them. I think now that I'm actually putting things together, I believe they were trying to cover it up when they first came to my door. Mm -hmm. So around four o'clock in the morning, the doctors called from St. Francis and said, Mrs. Wells, do you know your son's in the hospital? And I said, yes. I was advised by the police officers. He said, why aren't you here? And I said, the police officer said that I couldn't come because he was under arrest. The doctor proceeded to tell me that my son had went into cardiac arrest and that his kidneys were failing. This doesn't sound consistent to somebody being tased or pepper sprayed. When my husband and I got to the hospital and I saw my son, he was already gone. They had beat him to a pulp. He had bruises all over him. His head was swollen like a watermelon. His neck was busting because of the swelling. They broke his neck. My son's nose looked like an S. They actually just beat the crap out of him. And so when I saw that, I knew my son was gone then. Even if he did live, he would have been a vegetable. So once I got to the hospital, all the police officers were basically whisked out because I heard that the TBI had taken over the investigation. And that was it. They spoke to us, asked a bunch of questions, but I knew something wasn't right. I just didn't understand why they stopped my son in the first place. You said that you thought from the initial time when they contacted you that they were trying to cover up. Why did you think that? Well, I didn't think that initially as I started getting information and information mm -hmm. was coming to me because they made it seem like the stop and the start, the start and the stop of the, 
was at a certain location mm -hmm. when actually they were less than 80 feet from my home. You talked about what you saw. Now, I hate to bring this up, but I just have to be honest. You know Emmett Till? Yes. It's reminiscent of that. I haven't seen the video. I'm talking about what you saw when you went to the hospital. Oh, yes. 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 That was, that was terrible. Dad, would you say, do you agree with that? Oh, most definitely. Because I'm the one who took the picture that's being yeah, circulated. And I took the picture because he was in such horrific condition. Um, he shouldn't have been in that condition from pepper spray and tasing. He was never conscious. Never. No. You said, no. You said you believe if he lived, he would have been a vegetable. Yes. Yeah. Um, the last words on that video that America's going to hear, and Miss Wells, he calls out for you three times. Mm -hmm. Good wrenching screams for his See. mom. Go ahead, Mom. That was my baby. He was a mama's boy. That boy loved me to death. He has my name tattooed on his arm. People don't know what those five police officers did to our family. And they really don't know what they did to their own families. They have put their own families in harm's way. They have brought shame to their own families. They brought shame to the black community. I just feel sorry for, I feel sorry for them. I really do. I really feel sorry for them. Why do you say that? Because they didn't have to do this. And like I said, they brought a lot of shame to their own family. Once you see this video, and I know I didn't see it, but from what I hear, it's horrific. And the humanity of it all, where was the humanity? They beat my son like a piñata. My son. He was, he had Crohn's disease. He had surgery in, in 2013. My son weighed a buck 50. He was 6'3", and he weighed a buck 50. And those men, if you combine their weights, they all, it was over a thousand pounds, beating and beating a 150-pound person to death because that's what they did. They beat my son to death. He cried out for his mom. Yes. Yes, he cried out for me because I'm his mother, and that's what he was trying to get home to safety. And it was funny. I was in the room earlier and my stomach started hurting so bad. And I went into the den and I told my husband, my stomach is hurting so bad. And once I found out what happened, it was just the fact that I was feeling my son's pain. I was feeling my son's pain when they were beating him to death. <laughs> You said that you felt sorry for them. Where does that come from, Mom? I don't, I don't, I don't hate anybody. That's not in my nature. I just feel sorry for them because they did something horrendous. And You said they brought shame on themselves, their family, and you brought they brought shame on the black community. Can you speak to these are all black officers? No. People try to say black people 
We only try to go after white officers. That's not true. We don't care what color the officer is. We want bad officers taken off the force. We know there's a lot of great officers. I know officers. But there are bad officers, too. And those are the ones that we need to get rid of. Because all these kids that are dying and being killed at the hands of police officers, their parents pay taxes. They're paying their salaries. And then they have to be murdered by a person who's they're paying their salaries. That's not right. Why is it that black and brown kids always get beat up when they are encountered with the police? We just had an incident in Memphis right after my son with the white guy who spit on police officer. They didn't beat him to death. Why? And I'm not saying they're supposed to, but why? They ran. They didn't get beat up. I don't care what color police officer, Do but you, by them being black, it hurt the black community. You think there's a bias built into the system of regardless of what yes. color the officer is? Yes. What would you say to these officers, Mom? I would say to these officers that you have to show some compassion to people. We all know that a lot of these police officers intimidate black people in order for them to do something. They're waiting for them to do something. And they need to learn that everyone is human and everyone should be treated with respect. Yes. Yes. She didn't see the video. You saw the video. Yes. What are we going to say, Rodney? Uh, from the initial encounter. Um, you can't even look that way when he talks about the video. No. I, I didn't want her to. I didn't want her to see the video or hear the video. Um, it was our attorney's request that she could stay in there as long as she could. Um, she heard one word and had to leave out the room. And that was when they initially was pulling him out the car, he said, what did I do? I knew that's what he said. He said, what did I do? Why are y'all doing this to me? What did I do? And they proceeded to snatch him out of the car and was trying to wrestle him to the ground. Mm -hmm. And he got scared. So he was athletic enough to get out of their situation and run. And he was trying to run home because we were he was three blocks from the house when they stopped him. Um, so after the initial encounter, we didn't see everything because actually when the body cam started, mm -hmm. they were already engaged. Um, and then there was the second body cam, with the uh, sky cam, that um, videoed the encounter. And when I saw the police officer, you know, they have this little, like, stick, uh, this metal thing that they pull out. Yeah, they pull out like uh -huh. an antenna. So. Like an antenna, right. exactly. Retractable. Yes, and I saw them pull that out and started beating my son with it. Um, I saw officers hitting on him. I saw officers kicking him. One officer kicked him like he was kicking a football a couple of times. <laughs> and, uh, but the most... <laughs> The most telling thing about the video to me was the fact that it was maybe 10 officers on the scene and nobody tried to stop it or even after they beat him and, and they popped him up against a car, no one rendered aid to him whatsoever. They walked around smoking cigarettes like it was all calm and like, you know, bragging about what happened. And, yeah. For an hour of video. Yes. And he, you saw him just sitting there? He was sitting there, 
And then he slumped over. And an officer walked over to him and said, sit back up, mother MF, you know. And while he's handcuffed. So he had to, they pop him back up and he slumped over again. And they pop him back up again. But no one was rendering aid. I saw some uh, fire department people come out there. And they just walked around. And nobody showed him any aid. And they supposed to be uh, trained in first aid. Um, by the time the paramedic truck pulled up, that's when we couldn't see anything because the paramedic truck blocked the camera. Mm -hmm. So I was told that the lady who was driving the paramedic truck never got out. Sad. So it was, it was just, you know, to watch your son, as we state all the time, 150 pounds. How could he pose a threat to their lives the way they had to take his life? Unarmed. Unarmed. What's your message? <laughs> my message is the same as my wife said. Hopefully from this situation that we have reform, that police get better training, that you know, I've heard from people because of this, where this particular unit, has, Scorpion. Scorpion unit, has beat up other people. But because they didn't die, it's not publicized. It's like they, it's, it's washed under the rug. You think more is going to come out then? I believe that more is going to come out. It's going to be a strong reaction down the limit. After George Floyd, after so many of these tragedies we pray for reform can i ask you something she said her son came here on a mission and she doesn't hate anybody she feels sorry for them doing the work that you do is there a lesson in it you said this is a blueprint should be a blueprint for around the country so if that, what is the mission? What will accomplish the mission that she believes that her son was sent to this earth for and taken too quickly? And the prayer that I believe Ms. Wells is articulating is that this won't have to happen to other young black and brown children. We don't have to learn so many hashtags, Don Lemon. I don't have to keep talking to you on CNN week after every other week about yet another unarmed black person has been killed by police in a, a highly controversial manner. Hopefully, this institutional police culture that says it's okay to engage in excessive force against black and brown people will finally be dealt with. We won't continue to try to say that, oh, it's training. They can de-escalate just fine when it's white citizens. We mm -hmm. see that all, all the time. time. But it's when it's black and brown citizens, no matter if the police are black, Hispanic, or white, they seem to do the most, Don Lemon. And so this is the blueprint from now. You know, Memphis Police Department terminated them immediately. The DA brought charges within 20 days. Now, when it's not black officers, we want to see the same type of justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom? Yes? What you gonna miss about him the most? His beautiful smile. And just, my son had a beautiful soul and he touched a lot of people. And I always joke, cause he'll come in the house and he'll come in and say, hello, parents. <laughs> I'll never hear that again. I'll never cook for my son again. Mm -hmm. I'll never get a hug from my son again. Mm -hmm. I won't get anything from my son again. Mm -hmm. Just because some officers decided they wanted to do harm to my son. Mm -hmm. And so, this is a very difficult thing. No mother should have to go through this. No mother. 
And I never thought in a million years that I would be sitting on your show speaking about my deceased son that was killed by the Memphis Police Department. You only get one mom. Yes. And I just, I don't even know what to say. I'm, it's just so you know. I said I was a skater growing up. My mom is with me now, visiting from Louisiana. Oh. Sure, her um, boyfriend, she found her dead on Christmas Eve. Oh and she's my. supposed to stay with me for two weeks, and now she's been with me for a month, and she's going to continue to stay with me. She's been cooking for me, so I relate to what's going on mm -hmm. to you, especially as a black family. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the race of the officer. Mm -hmm. No. No one deserves to be treated like that. No one. You can be co opted, no matter what race, by a system mm -hmm. that is biased. Yes. And I appreciate you saying that because the world should, doesn't matter the race of the officer. People just want to be treated with dignity mm -hmm. and fairness. Exactly. And for a traffic stop, no one should have to die. Exactly. And I just want to say thank you to the district attorney because he's working very hard on this. And he was just elected in. And he's doing an excellent job as well as the chief of police. You know what's extraordinary? As painful as this is, you haven't heard this family espouse one ounce of hate. They continue to all. say, we just feel terrible that they did this to our child. So, right. That's Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.